So it looks like most of you are close to done taking down these questions. Um, I just want to remind everybody again, like, like you know, the reading in this case, right? It's in the red reading the world book, right? It's not in writing analytically. So <clears throat> make sure that you bring that one to class with you next time, right? Now I remember, I, 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 I do uh, recall as well that I did say that we would be using um, writing analytically in class, and we will later on. Um, the reason I haven't been using it much in class is because I know that the bookstores had supply problems, and it's been hard for people to get their hands on copies. So I've been trying to avoid using it much in class. Yes. I don't have a copy yet. Okay. You have the writing analytically. You don't have the reading the world yet. Okay. They may have some. They may have some of those over there. I don't I can know. Send you a picture of it or something. Um, yeah, uh, or, yeah I, I, can, I can make a PDF of it and send it to you after. Just email me to remind me to do that because I'll make you the promise now and I'll forget. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I can, does, does any, is anybody else going to need a copy of the Confucius essay? I was just, I didn't get it with the other one because I was trying to save money. And I thought you'd tell us before we needed to order it because mm -hmm. I didn't want to Amazon. Okay, everybody else has it though, everybody else is good? Okay, all right. Um, now the other thing I wanna remind people about, um, I do want you looking things up as you're reading, right? If you run across a word you don't know, don't just gloss over it, don't just skip it, right? Look it up. And I want you to submit at least three words that you had to look up with their definitions to the vocabulary folder that is on Georgia View. Yeah, and the basic idea here is to just like help you pick up a better habit and reward you for it, right? Because I, I know that a lot of times, you know, particularly if we feel pressed for time, we don't want to stop and, you know, fiddle and look something up. But you really ought to because if you're not looking it up, then you're probably missing much of the meaning of what you're reading. Yeah, Carmen. Um, how to get to the vocabulary folder? It, it'll, it'll be open on George View. It should be basically permanently open. Like, is it in the content section? It's in the, no, it's in the assignment section. Oh. Yeah, it's in the assignment section. And yeah, you'll, you'll, just, you'll just post there. And that one never closes, and you can post to it unlimitedly. Okay. So, um, you know, for each reading we do, you'll just keep adding more. Um, the other thing I want to say, though, right, is that three is the minimum, but it's not the maximum. And the more words you submit, the more points you will get. The more points to what? The, the more points you will get uh, towards the vocabulary requirement. Right? So I think you, you get, it's 10, it's 10 percent of your grade total, so it's a total of 10 points. Um, you don't, once you get to 10 points, you don't have to submit any more, although you know you certainly can, and it just won't get you any more points. Um, but yeah, the more you submit, the more points you will get. And this is like throughout, or just within this time? Uh, this is going to be um, everything that we're doing in reading the world. So everything we're doing in reading the world, I'm going to expect you to submit some vocab words. Okay. Anybody have other questions about this? Okay. One more thing I'm going to suggest. I may have already suggested this, but um, you know, I just want to show people, you know, again, like what my book looks like, right? Right. As you are reading, take notes in the margins. Use pencil if you don't own the book, or sticky notes, right? Um, this way, you know, if, you're, if you have particular thoughts, you can see exactly what in the text sparked that thought. Physically interacting with the text will help you think about it. And you can see here, too, like I've got, like, you know, different, um, you know, I've got, you know, I can see, like, where I've been reading this at different times, right, and I've had conversations with myself about this as I've thought through it, right? So these are all good things to do. Now, if everybody is done, taking down the questions, and it looks like most of you are, I want you to take the next 12 minutes, and I want you to answer, try to answer the following question to the best of your ability. So I want you to, I want you to think about what the purpose of education is 
And there are a couple of rules here, right? First off, right, do not cop out, right? Take a position, don't be wishy-washy. I also want you to keep writing until I tell you to stop. Even if you feel like you're repeating yourself. Just keep at it, right? It's okay to, you know, if you get a little hand cramp, shake it out, right? But I want you to try to keep writing for the whole 12 minutes. And we will read these aloud. But we're going to do this a little bit differently than we usually do. Instead of you reading your own piece aloud, because um, I know that not everybody is entirely comfortable reading their own thoughts out loud, fine, okay. What we'll do is you don't put your name on it. You'll pass them up, I'll shuffle them up, I'll redistribute them, and you'll actually read someone else's out loud. Okay, so go ahead, 12 minutes starts now. 12 minutes. You can do it. It is also probably a good idea to not write this on the same sheet as your notes. <laughs> because remember, you, you will be taking, you will be tearing it out and passing it up, right? We get it back though, right? What's that? We get it back though, right? You'll, you, I mean, you can get it back, yeah, but it's probably easier if you just don't have it on the page of notes to begin with.
almost there, two minutes. One more minute, finish line is in sight. So, <clears throat> tear the sheet out of your notebook, pass it up. Okay, so before I redistribute these, I just want to talk a little bit about this. Um, how did this feel? Okay. Did you did you feel like you were saying the same thing over and over again? Probably, yeah. But at the same time, I started thinking about things that I probably wouldn't have put on a piece of paper. Uh huh. So. Okay. So so even though you found yourself repeating yourself at some points, at other points you found yourself actually coming up with ideas you hadn't thought of before. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Everybody have more or less a similar experience? Yeah, one thing I noticed is that everybody seemed to kind of like shoot right out of the gate, right? I know they saw that a bunch of you got a lot of text down fast, and then you start to slow down as, uh, as the time elapses. And that's fine, like that's kind of like a big part of what happens here. So let me just explain uh, what we all just did. Uh, so what I just asked you to do is called free writing. And free writing is a kind of informal drafting, right? You're not writing to any particular process. You're not writing, uh, you know, an organized, coherent pattern of thoughts to a particular design. Um, you are writing more or less for yourself to help get ideas flowing, right? Um, and <clears throat> this works best under a couple of specific conditions, right? First, you need to have a specific question or preferably relatively small subject to analyze, right? So this is something that works well if you're given a prompt or if you are, um, like, you know, say, trying to take apart like pull the implications out of a relatively small piece of text, right? The other thing that's really important to do is set a time limit. Right, usually depending on the size of the thing you're trying to do, eight to 12 minutes is ideal. Um, and 
the reason you set yourself a time limit, right, is because, like, you know, as you know, as Henderson said, right, you start to feel after a point like you're just not getting anything new out of it, right? So if you stop at that 12 minute mark, then you probably have enough material to at least start working, right? Without um, just kind of like sitting there beating your head against a rock, getting uh, what's called diminishing returns. There's a lot of research, for example, that suggests that um, when employees of a company work more than 50 hours a week, they're actually less productive. Um, <clears throat> in large part because they're just um, spending too much of their time on the same tasks, right? So if you, make, if you make sure that you set yourself a time limit, you'll be able to get enough new material without getting too tired, right? Without getting too frustrated. Okay, so let's pass these out. If you end up getting your own, the only person who knows that is you, right? So we're just going to go around the room and read what you got. So let's start uh, with Meredith. Well, okay. Um, the purpose of education is to allow young minds to learn, develop, and grow with knowledge. Education keeps going as you get older and advances to help you have in-depth conversations, know the way things work and operate, and how and give you the basics for learning something new. You can't understand chemistry without some prior knowledge about math, elements, and language, letters of the alphabet. You will learn all of these things with education in school. Education also allows for us to get well-paying jobs and know how to do them to the best of our ability. You don't pay $4,000 for nothing, do you? The skills learned in college are vital for that dream job you want. However, individuals that decide against college will still learn how to do other jobs, to do their jobs. That is still education. Learning something new and necessary for the line of work. A cashier at a restaurant or store might know that, while a guy with a business degree might not know that. Different forms of education. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Shelby. Um, the purpose of education is to help students no matter what age, to get a degree in something that interests them. Education is to help students learn and grow over a period of time on a certain subject. It's different for many people due to their age. Education can help people later on in life in getting a job that pays well, along with many other things. I know in order to go to, into the military, you have to have a high school diploma, which opens up so many other job offers once they have to pay to have a well-rounded education in high school. If they choose not to complete high school, then they won't have many job offers or options other than going back to school. Education plays an important role in people's lives, mine included. Overall, education gives you options outside of your lifestyle. Thank you. Um, and by the way, I just want to note here that when I'm writing things down on the board, I'm only writing things down when I'm hearing something new, right? So it doesn't mean that I don't think your ideas are good. Um, or that I don't think they're worth uh, putting up here. It's just I'm just trying not to be too repetitive, right? Okay, um, Elena. The purpose of education is to grow your mind and expand your knowledge to be successful in years to come. Throughout the years, education becomes harder as you age to broaden your skills. Education will give you the tools and techniques you need to get an important job, to better support yourself and or family. From children to adults, our minds expand to hold more and more knowledge to better ourselves in the future. We are challenged as we continue our education to make our mind and skills more advanced. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Trinity. Um, education has been a huge component of modern day technology advances. We first started just as just learning how to start a start a fire, you know, <laughs> start a fire is how to do is now how to do quantum physics. Education in today's world is often students in a classroom being taught by an individual is very well. God, I can't read. 
a very well read to the subject they are teaching. It is important because without the structure of a classroom environment, then we would not have the society we do today. Albert Einstein would, <laughs> Albert Einstein would have never made the light bulb without first being taught how elements work. Education also allows our society to have deep intellectual conversations and gives the citizen a sense of independence. Knowing the basis of math can get you a job as a cashier to provide for your family or even just being exposed to different people. Religions and backgrounds and physical and physical school can educate one to understand the world better. Education provides structure to grow in a new environment but also independence to create your own thoughts and opinions. Education Education's purpose is to give a young child a path to follow to success. It is very important and necessary to be an active member in society. It creates expectations to uphold in the class setting, such as dressing appropriately, arriving on time, and how to respect a teacher. Education provides a mold. Yeah, I can't read that. Anyways, obviously. Education creates diversity within, <laughs> within school populations. The purpose is structure and it also allows everyone to start at the same spot and grow together as students. Education creates structure because it gives an individual an opportunity to learn and better themselves. Structure is important because without it, individuals would be ruined, would be running around with no path to follow. <laughs> Education has purpose. <laughs> okay, so somebody took the purpose part yeah. of it very, very seriously. Yeah, I Just <laughs> one, one, one quick small thing I want to point out. Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. That's what I said. That's an Albert Einstein. <laughs> Albert Einstein. Oh, I, I was going with, um, what's it called? The BC squared thing. It yeah. equals MCs with a theory of relativity. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Okay, yeah, that sounds annoying. Okay, yeah, Carmen. <laughs> Education is important because it opens up our brains to all to all of these new and fun possibilities about the future. Learning how to write your name or how to count to ten was getting us prepared for what we are facing now. We were younger when we were younger we hated the idea of school, but without it we wouldn't have the opportunities we have now. If you have no education, most good paying jobs won't hire you. Education is a way to find out what certain subjects you are in and how that will benefit you in the future. Education is used everywhere, not just in grade school, but in everything we do. We learn how to do something new at a job or learn how to drive a car. Education is in everything we do, and we will continue to learn new things every day. As much as most of us would like to think one day we won't have to learn anything anymore, that is just not possible. Okay, thank you. I think who, uh, Henderson, you're the only one who has yeah. it right yet? Okay, go ahead. To me, there are several different purposes of education. Some people use education as a way to prove to themselves that they have what it takes to be successful by completing years of education training. To others, the purpose of education is to inform and to help others. Take teachers, for example. They use education they were taught to share with others. Occupations such as pharmacists use education in a similar manner. They use the education they have to put into use with medication that helps others as well. Most occupations, matter of fact, use education as a way to help people when you think about it. Of course, education is meant to help one learn the information needed to succeed in the career goal, but when you look at the broader picture, it's meant to help the people of our world. Not only is it meant to help the people in our world, but it is also meant to help our world function in an orderly way. Imagine the world without education. It would probably be kind of chaotic. Having education gives us a purpose in the world as an individual. Without it, no one would know what to do with themselves. The purpose of education is to give a purpose to ourselves and help our world function properly. All right, thank you. Okay, so we've got a pretty good list of stuff here. Yeah. Um, so what I'd like you all to do now is take some of these things and try to organize them into consistent categories, right? Find things that seem to be similar to each other or seem to be related to each other and see if you can group them into a category and explain the logic of that category, right? 
So to give you an example, I can see two basic categories uh, <clears throat> forming uh, kind of like as contrast to each other almost immediately here, right? Internal motivators and external motivators. Right, so things like uh, job skills, um, advancements, uh, social conventions. Right, helping share, helping or sharing. Right, these are all kinds of like external motivators to getting an education, right? Even like, like the idea of getting a degree, right? This is a thing that I get at the end of a process. So right, things outside of yourself that motivate you. Whereas, you know, things like, you know, maybe you know, like knowledge, um, personal growth, um, expertise in a particular field, um, independence, right, self-fulfillment, right, these are all <clears throat> kind of intrinsic or internal motivators, right, that would encourage someone to get an education, things that don't, that aren't dependent on any kind of external reward. So see what you, take a few minutes, see what you can do with this, see what kind of categories you can come up with. Here. Um, you'll, yeah, um, sure, <laughs> if you know who has, if you, if you know who's in red, go ahead and. <laughs> And the reason, uh, yeah, go ahead. The reason we do the reason we do this, by the way, is that the, you know the reason we free write is to try to find material, right? And now what we're trying to do is to organize that material into something we could build a coherent argument around. So I'm not oh, didn't you just do what you just assigned us? What's that? Didn't you just do what you assigned us? Oh, As an example, yes. So we're coming with our own two different. Yeah, you don't have to come up with two different ones. There are two contrasts, right? I came up with two contrasts here. Come up with as many categories as you feel are, are relevant. And if you want to come up with some kind of contrast, that's that's fine. But you don't have to.
And this time you can just go ahead and speak up once you think you've got something interesting. We have to use all of those words? You, you don't have to use all of them. Category I saw was like social skills. Okay. So I put cool. conversation in there, uh -huh. openness, and social convention. Okay. Conversation, openness. openness, and also, yeah, learning to obey social conventions. Yes. Okay, good. So that the, so one could argue that the purpose of formal education, at least, is to teach us um, how to work with other people, right? How to operate within, uh, within society. All right, good, what else you got? And yeah, take your time. She just happened to come up with something relatively fast. Okay. What's that? Okay, um, what do you mean by degrees? Explain. Like business, all that. I guess like degrees could fit in the education type of degrees. Okay, um, we're actually going to talk about something more along those lines in a minute, so let's sit on that for now. Um, for I'll put beneficial to others. Okay. And what did you put in that category? Helping slash sharing, order, techno techno technology, I don't know that, advancement. Okay. And structure. Okay. Technological. <laughs> <laughs> Structure? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so and I think, yeah, you two are kind of looking at looking along similar lines here, right? So what you take these categories and do with them is probably uh, make some kind of argument about, again, like the benefits of education being primarily social and not so much personal, or at least like these benefits to society more broadly, right? being at least as important as any personal benefits that somebody gets, or might maybe is the reason why we pursue education in the ways that we do, right? Okay, good. Anybody else? Okay, so I think we get the point here. The basic idea behind free writing is to give you information to work with, right? to give you ideas to work with that you can then organize into patterns that you can make into you know, something like a working thesis. And we'll talk more about thesis development um, in a couple of sessions. Um, what I'd like you to do now, I'm gonna give you another question I want you to do some thinking about. And maybe try to keep some of this stuff in mind, right? I want you to take eight minutes and I want you to think about what you would study or pursue. Damn it. Brain works faster than hand. What would you study or pursue? If things like money and social status didn't matter. And why? We're gonna tear these out too no. No, these these you're gonna you're gonna read out, you're gonna have to own. Yep. 
12 minutes? Eight. Two more minutes.
take one more minute. time. So let's just <clears throat> go around the room then and see what y'all said. So Carmen, let's start with you. One of the things I was studying and pursuing was social skills and money didn't matter is acting. Acting is something I've yeah. always wanted to do since I was young. However, getting into the acting business can be really challenging because it takes time. With life going by so fast, there isn't much time I would have to waste. I had to choose a career that would be certain to help me financially when it came to my future, and being in the medical field was one of those careers. Although going through the process of making it to this career goal takes time, it has a higher chance of being possible for me to obtain. If I didn't have to depend on money to keep me stable while I took the time to pursue acting, I would have done it. Okay. Um, have you done any acting, like in high school productions, things like that? I was going to play in high school. Okay. Um, you know, it might not be a bad idea for you to get in, maybe, you know, we don't have a drama program here anymore uh, because cuts, uh, because state of Georgia, but, you know, we won't, <laughs> we won't, we won't go into that. Um, but we do have a pretty vibrant community theater in America. So, you know, that might be, you know, you, you might want to look and see, like, what kind of productions uh, Sumter Players is putting on and see if there are things you want to try out for. I think they're actually doing a production of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, I think it's set for early next year. And, you know, you might want to, you know, see, you know, see if uh, you, know, you can audition for a role or even if there are other ways you can help out. One thing that you can do by kind of volunteering for organizations like that is you may also be able to find other ways to contribute um, that might lead to more, um, like might lead more directly to some kind of career goal or job goal. So yeah, it's just it's it's, it's something to explore, right? Okay, cool. Meredith, what about you? Um, I said if money and social status didn't matter, I would still study the university which requires me to have knowledge to be a college major. I wouldn't change what I studied just because of money and social life because I didn't choose to be a college major because that school based off of money and social life. Mm -hmm. I chose it because that's what interests me and that's what I want to do with my life. My life will not be dictated on whether if I have enough money or if I have a social life because I still I will still do what's best for me. Okay. What is it that interests you about anesthesiology specifically? You just like the idea of knocking people out? <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I grew up with like most of my family was like in the medical field. Okay. And so my grandmother that passed away from lung cancer, mm -hmm. um, she had like a mess, uh, like a mess up with her uh, anesthesia, mm -hmm. and I was like, that's what I want to do because like I'm not going to be the person to mess it up because they didn't right. take time to read the case. And so the medicine that she was on. You want to make sure that what happened to her doesn't happen to other people. That's yeah. That's great, um, and yeah, I think that that's a really good, solid reason for wanting to do what you want to do. Thank you, Elena. What about you? Um, I would pursue studying hair. Well, not just hair. I'm going to design the best hair products over time to <laughs> color and heal hair. There are Porsche products that tend to color and heal, but never all at once. You can't use purple or blue shampoo without drying your hair out and damaging it. Okay. Theoretically, it's not even shampoo at all. So the shampoo products I would design blend everything together in a safe way, giving every person what they want. Perfect. Okay, so are, are you majoring in chemistry? Um, biology, actually, but after I'm finishing out this um, semester, probably, I'm 
me and my boyfriend are moving up to Athens, so I'm probably going to study cosmetology. Okay, okay. Ah. Yeah. Henderson, what about you? I would love to know more about the brain and why we act the way we do. This would fall into the degree of psychology, which is very interesting to me. I often okay. try to look at the world as I am just a component in it, but but what I do affects the way the world is. When I'm not kind of in the day today activities, I love to wonder why our brains function like they do. It is crazy to me that we have developed as as a society enough to be able to understand why we are the way we are. I think I would pursue this degree because as much as it is telling me about just the brain in general, it is making a connection to me and why I am the way I am. I'm a very emotionally inclined person, okay. often the ones my friends go to for advice, and psychology gives a lot of answers to the random thoughts in my head. Uh huh. And do you like it when people come to you advice, or yeah. does it feel burdensome? Yeah. Really okay. Do. Yeah, as long as it's something that you like. Yeah. <laughs> I like, because, yeah, I like yeah. helping people and like sure. the psychology, mental side, I feel like it's a lack in right. today's world. So I really like having that conversation. Yeah, because yeah, there are there is also like the experimental side of psychology that yeah. you wouldn't really have to deal with people yeah. say coming to you with their problems. Yeah. Which my major is biology, so I'm in some intro to psychology classes. So okay. I don't I was gonna, I really like psychology. Uh huh. Well, you know, I mean, if you're inter if you're interested also, like in how like the physical workings of the brain, right? Yeah. It sounds like what might actually suit you best is maybe something like a psych major and a bio minor. Yeah, yeah. I'm just rolling right now. I'm trying to figure it out, but yeah. 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 Well, and, and and that's the thing is like you know, you are all just rolling and trying to figure it out right now, right? Yeah. And I think that we try to force you into majors too quickly based on pressures that our administration faces and the faculty face um, that are not necessarily like conducive to your education or your development, right? So essentially what, the reason we try to, to like put you in these boxes so quickly is because our state budget allocation is dependent on our six year graduation rate. So if y'all take too long figuring it out, um, and don't graduate quickly enough, then the state cuts our funding. So unfortunately, like we are placed under external pressures that make us do things that are ultimately, at least in my opinion, not good for you. I mean, you know, when I was in, like where, where I went to school, you couldn't declare a major until you were a sophomore. You had to do your gen ed courses first and figure out, you know, figure out what you liked, what you were interested in before you committed to something. All right, Trinity, what about you? I said an elementary school teacher. Okay. And I chose that because, like, I love kids and I wanted, like, ideally would love to be, like, a first grade teacher, but they don't pay. <laughs> I feel like they don't pay high enough uh -huh. for, like, me personally. I like money. Okay, well, but again, but like, we're, we're thinking, like, if money, if money is no object, yeah. right? So, yeah, this I is what you'd like that. to do, right? Yeah. And you're right, we don't pay teachers enough, yeah. um, particularly in K through 12. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, it's hard work. Mm -hmm. And much of what we think of in society as caring work, like teaching, nursing, things like that, like things that are actually really valuable are things that don't get paid very highly, right? While people who, you know, do very little other than moving money around, um, actually get paid very, very highly. Um, and, you know, well, you know, we can see simply by my tone, I think, which, which I find more socially useful. But, <laughs> but let's not wander down that path too far. Uh, Shelby, what about you? Um, I mean, I'm not studying nursing right now, but that's what I want to do. Okay. Because I feel like it's kind of like Yeah. So I was like, nobody in my family's really, you know, done something, you know, and it's that hard. Okay. And I've always wanted to help people. I really want to be a pediatric nurse. Like, we're okay. having babies and stuff because I love kids, but we'll have to find one of them, like, die. Why do you like, they're a lot of Why would you say that? No, get out of the room. Like, 
I would never be able to do that. Like, like there's no other people like I would never no be able to do way. that. No way. Kudos to you. Like working for like kids, like in the middle. Well, my like job, like throughout high school, I was a nanny. Like, it was like baby. Mm -hmm. Like I like watched her since she was like a newborn. Uh -huh. like, I grew up with her, and I'm just like, I love her so much. She's like my little sister. But mm -hmm. I just I've always wanted. I've always been drawn to like kids. I feel that. But like. Or like I don't see myself like I mean yeah I'm I can tell an older person but like, I don't see myself like being more drawn mm -hmm. to children. You, you you don't feel the same like the same pull towards yeah. you know like helping and helping an older like a, a, doing geriatric nursing that sort of like, thing. If I didn't do like nursing like with like children I would like I'd be like I work with like kids and teachers. Okay. So that's like me like if it has something to do with kids it's like I'm more drawn to that. Okay. See, I'm like more drawn to like the older aspects of the. I don't know why. I guess it's the psychology thing. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I've, 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 I've had to. I, I've had to take care of uh, sick older people, and um, yeah, I would also probably rather like. I don't even particularly like kids, but I would rather take care of kids. <laughs> the, 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 the clean, the cleanup aspect is very, very different. But you know, um, like the reason, like the reason we're doing this, you know, I'll you know I'll, I'll, I'll play along with this too, right? You know, it's like if I had it to do over again, right? If I hadn't, you know, spent <clears throat> nearly a decade of my life getting a PhD in English, um, I would want to be a city planner. Okay. Um, what was your PhD over? What? Uh, Specifically, like what did I write my dissertation on? Um, my actual field of study is um, 20th century Irish poetry. Uh, well, what? <laughs> so specific. I love well, yeah, that. But, but I, well, well, that's the thing. Like a PhD has cool. to be, right? You know. Um, so yeah, I mean, like you know, I, I the field is otherwise so large, right? You have to narrow it down to some small, that's manageable cool. thing. <laughs> I mean, my mom saw lichens, and I don't know anything about lichens, but she wrote this big old thing. Uh -huh. I tried to read it one time, and I was just like, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. like so city planning, like, map and roads, or, like, events uh, going on? Yeah, well, a city planning yeah, would be more like the, like, the like physical infrastructure, right? So yeah, mapping out, you know, roads, cool. you know, public parks, you know, where. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, like, like where, where, where do you know, where do we put retail? Where do we put residential? Things like that. And you know, this is largely because I feel like. Um, as a, like as a society, we lack public space, yeah. right? There's too much private space in the U.S. and not enough public space, and as such, like too many places have no real sense of community. So what I would want to do is try to build spaces that foster some kind of sense of community. So putting in more sidewalks, putting in more public parks, putting in more green space generally, um, and you know, like kind of giving cities back to. Taking cities away from cars a little bit and putting them, giving them back to people. That would that would be that would be what I would want to do. Either that or you know maybe like maybe own a record store. But that's my good city. Yeah, I, 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 I have, a, I, I have a, a, fair, a fairly large collection of LPs, and actually, it used to drive my wife nuts because we moved a lot. I was about to say, so, yeah. how did that work? Okay, um, but yeah, all right, so remember that for, uh, we're about out of time here. Um, I think that like we have actually done some pretty good and valuable thinking today. Um, so I want uh, everybody to come back fresh on Monday to talk about Confucius, right? Sweet. All right, have a good weekend, guys. Bye.